yes, sir. Uh, oh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, oh. I would see like a beautiful white flower blooming uh, with some yellow in the center and some beautiful green, dark, deep green uh, leaves. I would see it being like a bright colored flower, like something that truly pops and, you know, like an exotic flower that, yeah, it comes out once a year and just to see it bloom is like a once in a blue moon event. Like it's a, it's a truly powerful thing. If I were to think of a flower, the only thing I can think is it's either an annual because it's something that changes every year. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's actually a really cool metaphor. So to me, it's yellow. Tell that story. I like that story. What, whenever you threw the ball over? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so yeah, <laughs> Kathy's mom and grandmother moved next door to us back in the day. And uh, Kim would go in the backyard and throw a ball over. So my daughter, Kristen, would like, Hey, who are you? Hey, who are you? And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> Just to go talk to each other. Um, so yeah. the first event in the, you know, the yard next door, you know, in 2012, right? Yeah, that's right. So Kim calls us. She's like, hey, I'm putting on this festival. I'm like, oh, cool. It wasn't a festival. Well, no, no, uh, no, just a backyard thing. Mm -hmm. But what was funny is she's like, I'm charging X for this. And then VIP's that. I'm like. I hear you play out at these local clubs. I ain't paying a VIP. It's like your parents' backyard. How big is it? So I had to sit behind a rope. I felt cheap and all that, but it was so funny. That was a pretty awesome stage, too, that first year. That was probably my, still my most memorable moment. Yeah. Throwing that on me. Hey, we're going to have a concert in the backyard. What can you do for a stage and lighting? I said, wow, I don't know. Start thinking outside the box. And we built that thing out of pallets. and. Yeah. Stacked up pallets and covered it with plywood and screwed it all down and put a skirt on it and put up some posts. Yeah, painted yeah. it black. And then the second year we had like a ten by ten riser with a with a ten tent, by ten tent, tent on over, top. Yeah. yeah. And then Nakati's <laughs> like, we're gonna build a stage and it's just incredible. So I've been looking for a signature event for the Nakati community for, for quite some time. One day, received a telephone call uh, from Kathy Sullivan, Kim Page's mom. Well, when it started, we were a little uncertain as to what it would be. And uh, we have a lot of outside groups that want to use the facilities at Nakati and wanted to become part of what Nakati was becoming. So she told me the story of Roscalusa. That began a conversation, and an hour after that, we had a new vision and a handshake agreement for what Roscalusa could look like in the future and how Roscalusa could grow. What's happened, a seed was planted in the backyard of a home on Roscoe Boulevard in Palm Valley, Florida, that now encompasses dozens and dozens of people. And it's so much bigger than anything singular. I don't know what year it was, maybe one of the first few in Nocatee, but when we were pulling in on a Nocatee Parkway, and we were like, all right, this is gonna be great, you know, backyard oh, barbecue concert. Yeah. This is the Here first we go. year at Nocatee. Okay, yeah, right? that makes sense. Yeah. Weren't really sure what yeah. to expect, right? Because No idea. Yeah, small thing, and then we pull in. We weren't even there yet. We went like over the overpass uh -huh. and I was driving and it got really quiet and I was like, what's happening? Why isn't Kim talking? I just kept talking. She wasn't answering, which is typical, but <laughs> all of a sudden I looked at her and you were like, pure panic. And yeah. I was like, what is happening? Because we had no idea, you know, starting in y'all's backyard the first year and then with like a hundred friends and family, including this crazy guy. Um, I remember calling the sound company for that second year and they were like, well, how many people do you think you're going to have? I'm like, um, I mean, we had a hundred last year, so maybe like 
you know, this is public, so maybe like 200, 250, 250 people. Yeah, it was awesome. wild, and just pulling up, because we had been at the field all day working, and... We um, ran home to change, and turn right back around. Change, turn right back around, then... And it was immediate here. Seeing all those cars, that's what did it. Yeah. It was like rolling up and seeing hundreds and hundreds of cars, and... Um, and lots I guess, of golf carts. Yeah. <laughs> lots of golf carts. Lots of golf carts. And we, um, the Nocatee folks, Lee and David, they were like, I think you guys had 2,000 people here tonight. What I like is y'all, before it was just, everything was like by the seat of our pants. You know, oh, this, 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 the, the chips, the signs, everything was like, <laughs> y'all put so much effort into it now. It's like, you know, you're all planning for the next year, you know? I mean, always wanting it to be better and better and better. And, you know, everybody's just so hard working. I mean, y'all are just going at it all the time and you coming in on pre-planning yeah. and the everything. The farmer's markets. Yeah, yeah. we mm -hmm. come in. She flies in from Nashville, January, February, March, and April to just talk about the event. It's so funny, the Nocatee community. People come there and they come to the farmer's market and they're like, well, yeah, we moved here two weeks ago. Our, our neighbors already told us about Roscaloosa. Yeah. I mean, I there's a... It. Yeah, they people... They can't not be there. Yeah, people was even said, you know, we moved here because we heard about Roscaloosa or like, because they promote it on their their television, their radio, Nocatee yeah. Radio. It's crazy. It's but, like uh, the inauguration. Are you a Nocatee resident if you haven't been to Roscaloosa? Yeah, it's really a unique experience and how we do the riders rounds and things like that. Yeah. It's incredible. It's much more intimate than hearing it on the radio. Yeah, and the songwriters are the ones that, you know, of course we all know. They come up with the ideas and they've experienced it yeah. and they've lived it and then they pitch it to a different artist and that artist just essentially becomes an actor and has to yeah. figure out what it, that song means to them. So when you when you hear the songwriter sing it, it's really what the song was intended to be. So yeah. you see that raw emotion. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. If you're truthful about your experience, you'll be completely original and completely universal. Um, my husband died in 94, and then six years later I went through breast cancer. Now my son was 13 when his dad died, and when I went through breast cancer he was 19. So these were very iconic ages for him to go through that. I fortunately came through it, and I'm completely healed now. It's been, you know, a couple of decades. But I it's sort of like looking at cancer from both sides now. You know, I, I tended to my husband who was very ill and went through it, and then I went through it myself. And I, was, I had just lost my husband, and I was kind of cracked open. And I think a lot of songs and art come through humans that are cracked open, and then they just they create something. But then that thing goes out in the world and finds people who need to hear it right when they need to hear it. And that's got nothing to do with the person who's, who wrote it. Last night, when Beth Nielsen was talking about, uh, you know, we never know how far our songs are gonna travel. So, so much like uh, uh, the seed of a flower, you don't know where the bird or, the, or, or what is gonna take that seed, where it's gonna go, what it's gonna land, where it's gonna root. This flower just keeps growing, and I think the people who come in uh, want it to, and for the cause of what it's all about, I mean, who wouldn't? The Tom Coughlin J Fund provides financial and emotional support for families who have a child tackling cancer. In October of 2018, I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and I spent about my first six months in the hospital doing nothing but staying in my room, because when I first got diagnosed, I really, I didn't want to go out. I was dealing with my own diagnosis, and I really didn't want to go out. The last time we were able to go to the children's hospital, was in 2019, right before Roscaloosa. Just to bring a little piece of Roscaloosa to them. And Josh was there, this kid I had never met before, and he was super down, um, and you know, he was, I wasn't sure what he, what he was going through at the time, and um, I just thought, you know, he was being like a funny little bratty teenager, you know, that was giving me a hard time. He's like, I bet you don't know this song, and I'm like, well, try me, you know, like, I feel like we were like, kind of giving it back to each other, you know, and, um, and we just really hit it off, and he just kept throwing songs out, and, you know, he started to come alive, and, um, and then a couple, I guess a couple months ago, Rita had sent us an email and was like, hey, just want to let you know we were just hanging out with Josh and 
we asked him like, what's your favorite J Fun memory? And um, he said when Kim and the Roscaloosa team came to um, the hospital, and yeah, and um, and just trying to like, because I guess that at that point that was his. For I just found this out when they came over the other night um, for our, our dinner before Roscaloosa, and they said that um, that was his first time out of his room after chemo. After chemo, and um, he was just really sad and going through a really, really hard time. When I had the child life specialist come in and they asked, you know, we've got Kim Page here and she wants to put on a concert for you guys. And, and it really got me out of that shell of, I don't want to do anything. And she really got me back into my funk and she got me back into doing things and going out into the world. And she really, it was amazing. Like she helped me more than she will ever know. and. How just having that opportunity of feeling some sense of normality was just amazing. I am so grateful for the opportunity of meeting you. You have truly made a difference in my life. The mini concert at Wilson's has, for, has touched me more than you'll ever know. Truly something I'll never forget. Thank you, Joshua. Aww. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you crying? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's pollen. It's pollen. It's pollen. <laughs> Steve, are you crying? We love Joshua. We're waiting for Joe. Yeah. Yeah, it was oh, great to see water Joshua. Yeah. Everybody yeah. And, uh, at, uh, great family. His parents are amazing. They are so yeah. fun. And in so Sloan, too, she yeah. was there. Um, and her parents spoke at um, Roscoe this year. And, um, and her older sister. Charlotte, who donated the bone marrow for Sloan's bone marrow transplant to save her life. Yeah, and then her parents just got up on stage and was able to like share that story. I'm like, oh my god. I don't know if they said, but Sloan is now in her mission. Thank you. Um, the J Fund continues to be for our, um, here for our family, and no one fights this awful disease alone. You, you know, when you face challenges and you come through to the other side, you can really enjoy the good times on another level. And that's what I saw in that little girl. I saw her, her spirit fully formed, uh, and she knows more about pain than most kids her age but it's, it's not a detriment going forward, it's a strength. Well, you know, when, when somebody gets diagnosed with pediatric cancer, usually one or both of the parents have to uh, quit their job or take a leave, and that has huge implications on their financial security. So the J Fund is there to help them keep a, head over, uh, a house over their head, uh, food on the table, and the lights on. And, you know, so that's kind of the basic work that they do to help the families. It's amazing to support all the way around. Yeah, I mean, you know, all the volunteers that step up, I mean, come in, do the roping, and just moving all the barricades, everything. Returning they, every single year. Oh yeah, they've been here ever since. They're always behind the scenes. We might get shout outs and things like that, but it's just incredible, the support. I honestly love that they're sideways, so everybody gets to look at them and they get to look out. They have the perfect deal. Where is it going? All the way over there. This is only sponsor area. Yeah. Oh, VIP, no VIP food tent? Where is it going? All the way over there. You can put it right here. on Saturday. Do you want to support this event next year? <laughs> I hope it's <you> so. <laughs> we need to go home and get our hats. <laughs> We can't be out here without our no. sea bass. For the rest of the week, we're in the house. I think, uh, I think a lot of the volunteers do it because they have a passion for what we do. You know, helping children is important to them, seeing it firsthand, you know, the struggles that families go through. You know, just with just simple things, even with just COVID just happening, you know, families have really struggled tremendously. And so to add on a child with cancer, it's even more so. So I think a lot of people understand the passion. I think the songwriters understand the passion. A lot of the songwriters maybe have that in their music, use the words, you know, express that through their music. Um, and I think our volunteers express that through helping. And I think our families that attend or our, our patrons that attend express that by, you know, donating. 
and just being there as part of that, giving back to the community. It's been cool. It's like watching a kid grow up. It's like watching a flower grow. Every year, see bigger crowds and bigger crowds and bigger crowds and more musicians and more talent and just the the giant hug that this that this event has become is just really, really cool. There was something about this that led us to believe this was different and uh, and it was worth taking a, uh, taking a shot and uh, and there is no doubt from the very first time they came there was a level, level of credibility that came with not only with Kim but the artists she brought and the, the, um, the professionalism of the entire production and we knew there was something here that was going to last for a long time. You know what's great about Roscalusa is it's small and you can really get an intimate flavor uh, and, and the artist, you can be with the artist and in their presence and that, that just it levels up for me, you know, that's, that's the good part. Because they're interacting with the crowd and the songwriters and that's what they do um, and what they're passionate about, they interact with the crowd, it feels like you're sitting in the living room uh, just hanging out with them. It's like an all-day concert in a park. It's fabulous. We are looking for the the outdoor events, the you know laying everything out on the on the grass and just being outside and enjoying being with a group of people. It's just great to listen to the songwriters, you know, singing and kind of talk about their lifestyles and where they started the song, how the song was written, and who they've written for. And you know, you hear that song, it's like, oh, you wrote that song for that artist. Everybody was smiling, everybody was happy. Everybody was there. They were there for more than the songs. They were there, it was, it was, like, it was like a reunion. You're really surrounded by this community that all interacts with each other and, and you're really, it's like you're hanging out with a bunch of friends, you're hanging out with a bunch of people. So whether you know the people next to you, you know, at the beginning, you're definitely gonna know them at the end. You know, part of it's the feel of you're, you're in a field, right? With this, this little tiny amphitheater that feels so much bigger when you're there. It's great to walk around throughout the venue and watching the people relaxing, enjoying the evening, enjoying the music. The word for that festival would have to be love because there sure was a lot of love. Maybe the most mind-boggling part of this whole thing is, is partially the humility, but also the exuberance and the joy. And you can see it in the artists, right? When they're all there at the end of the show and everybody's playing. The people involved uh, the J Fund, everything it brings, and everything it brings to to the community on a local level, it it really is amazing. It, it's wonderful to be a part of. With this whole experience being a decade down the road, it's just incredible how the whole thing from from a thought and kind of a lark, or let's let's go to my house and have a retreat. And, and write and play and just mess around. And now you have people who are in the Songwriters Hall of Fame and multiple Grammy winners and all of these things. And again, dozens and dozens of number one hits. That's a big shrub. Kim is like a niece to me now. You know, we've spent a lot of time together. My life is better because she's been in it. And my life is better because of my association with Roscalusa. And I'm not giving that up. The amount of effort and time that people put into making this t um, a, a very, uh, uh, the most popular event that we have in Nocti throughout the year, the amount of time and effort they put into it, we really appreciate. Um, but Kim's mom, Joe, they just do, Steve, right, all the background people, they just do such an amazing job, they make this thing happen, and, you know, obviously Kim, because without this, you know, goes without saying, without, without her, without this vision, none of this happens. I don't know how we all got so lucky to, it, that's why it's just like fate, you know, Roscalusa is, has a mind of its own, I'm and it chose us. That, I'm glad you threw that ball over the fence. <laughs> 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 it all started from the ball over the fence. <laughs> uh, ten years. Yeah, ten years. Absolutely.